Welcome to this edition of Campus Talk. I'm Alicia Henson. Today we have a series of short interviews about a variety of topics at Missouri Southern State University, including faculty and staff on campus. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to return to the school that you graduated from, but as a new professor? Next up, we join student Zachary Dodge as he speaks with Kisa Clark, a Missouri alumni, about her unique experiences as a new lecturer in the communications department. Hello, my name is Zachary Dodge. I am a mass communication student here at Missouri Southern State University. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Kisa Clark, a new professor here in the comm department, about her experience here so far. Thank you for joining me, Kisa. Thanks for having me, Zach. How has your day been so far? Pretty good. It's Friday, so that's right, it's a Friday. good day. <laughs> so what classes are you teaching here? Um, I'm teaching a variety of both video and audio production classes, as well as gender and intercultural uh, small group communication this semester, and also do some of the COM 100 speech class. So. OK. Good cool. mix. Cool. Yeah, good mix. Yeah. Um, how has your experience here been so far overall? So far, it's been great. Um, I was a student here not that long ago, so it's been really fun to come back to the department um, mm -hmm. as a teacher and um, been nice to get to know some of the students and really enjoying it so far. Right. Okay, and you said that you were a student here before. What is that, how has that transition been from going from a an alumni to a professor here? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, I feel very fortunate because being this is my first semester as you know, a full uh, teacher and in a college setting. And mm -hmm. so it's really made the transition very smooth just because I'm not at a new building, a new university. I know right. a lot of my old professors are now my colleagues. So it's just really nice because if I have a question, you know, I'm not afraid to go ask them and just been very welcoming and it's just like coming home. So it's been really nice. Right, cool, mm -hmm. cool. Um, what are some things that you've seen have actually changed? I know that there are a lot of things that are similar, but yeah. those things that have changed. Since yeah, really. well, yeah, there's been some changes, even though it hasn't been too long, but just, you know, around campus, looking around with the new dorms mm -hmm. and the new uh, field and field house you right. know, building and, you know, improvements in our department too. We have new editing system, new cameras, things like that. So it's nice to see the changes and new faces as well, mm -hmm. even, you know, students and new professors. And so um, good changes too. Cool. Yeah. Good. So what made you decide to go into teaching? Well, uh, kind of got, just got into it. As a student here, I was an uh, assistant with the UE, the freshman experience class, okay. and I enjoyed that. Cool. Um, and I decided to go on and get my master's. And uh, during my time as a master's student, I was also a teaching assistant. So okay. I taught some classes, college classes as a student and assisted with some other classes and really enjoyed that. Um, and then I've also done some teaching uh, abroad as okay. an English teacher, both in Costa Rica cool. and this last year in Spain, and really enjoyed that. So uh, just through these experiences, I've really liked it, and I like you know being in the communication field, um, but also sharing that and teaching it. So it's just yeah, been a good fit. Very cool, very cool. Um, how was your experience in Spain? whenever you were teaching? It was great. I, I will say I'm happy to be here teaching college students rather right. than uh, 11 to 16 year olds because uh, that's a little more classroom <laughs> management work. Um, right. But no, I, I really learned a lot um, and just the being in Spain and in a different setting um, and for that time period it was just a really great experience. But happy to be here teaching in this setting now. Right, cool. Um, I know that uh, you gave the first uh, lecture yes. this semester for this yeah. the Spain theme semester how was that it was it was good you know I knew I was going to do that that before I went to Spain um, I was here and I knew that that was gonna be the theme semester okay. so I kind of knew going in that I might come back and do that right. um, and it worked out well I was working here too so you cool. know I was here but right. no it was great it was nice to share the experience and it's kind of a good yeah, uh, you know, experience for me to kind of break down all that experience into a 50 minute um, presentation. It yeah. was nice. And uh, yeah, it was great. All right. So if students need to contact you, how would they do that? Okay. Well, I'm here in Webster Hall. My office is 134, I'm pretty sure. So you can come see my office or shoot me an email. You can look up my email in the directory. And cool. yep, uh, my door's open. All right. Is there anything else that you would like to add that I haven't covered yet? Um, <laughs> no, no. Just the, um, uh, glad to be here and yeah, yeah. All right. 
Rico, well, thank you very much for taking the time to join me today. No problem. And thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Up next, we have a visit with another new faculty member in the Department of Communications. Welcome to this portion of the show. My name is Molly Greer, and today I have Professor Natalie Greekew with me here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the fact that you're a new professor mm -hmm. here. So, because this is your first semester, what led you to wanna to teach here at Missouri Southern? So, I remember the whole interview process and finishing a dissertation uh, in my PhD program and applying to Missouri Southern, and I was called up, had a great phone interview, and then they flew me out out to um, Missouri, and I remember, to be honest, uh, freaking out a little flying into Tulsa <laughs> from Washington State. <laughs> and so I remember landing, getting on that Will Rogers Highway, <laughs> making it um, to Joplin, but it was immediately I knew it was a good place to be. The people were so nice, faculty was so warm, uh, and then I had one of the best teaching presentations, and I've taught for six years, going into the seventh year of um, teaching, and it was one of my best presentations, and I knew there was something special about that, and of course they offered me the position. Okay, so you said you taught before. Where did you teach before you came here? Yeah, so before I taught in my master's, I taught at University of Colorado in Boulder, and um, there I taught organizational, some organizational communication, um, but more so uh, with human, um, what was it? Uh, human relations, and then also um, I taught at Washington State University. So um, that's where I really got into being able to teach public relations, but also creative strategies. Okay, so what classes do you teach here at Missouri Southern? So right now I'm teaching uh, ethics in strategic communication, crisis communication, intro to public relations, and then uh, oral comm class. Okay, and those two classes, um, ethics and strategic communication and crisis communication, mm -hmm. are new classes yes. to Missouri Southern. Yeah. So you're kind of jumping in that role. Can you tell right. us a little bit about the importance of those two classes? Yeah, I think they're both really important. One, because strategic communication, um, particularly public relations, is becoming so big. So even though jobs may not say they're particularly specific to public relations, they're public relations jobs, and we need to make sure that we're talking about ethics, you're gonna be challenged in the job, in the workplace with communication. So that's a key course. And um, the other crisis is huge right now. So a lot of communication departments are moving towards crisis and risk, risk programs, also because of the growing uh, professional field. Yeah, I can definitely see yeah. how those are important in all the PR and management in mm -hmm. business, so I can definitely see how students would be interested in taking those classes. Yeah. What has been your favorite thing about Missouri Southern so far? So far, sounds cheesy, but it's the heart. <laughs> um, right away, I just, um, coming from research institutions and enjoying research, but really enjoying teaching, I've just felt at home uh, in the department with students. Students have been so wonderful so far. I don't know about this test one, they may not like me after <laughs> that, um, but all in all, there's just so much heart here, and they know, you know, faculty know their students, they um, talk with their students, and I, I love that aspect of Missouri Southern. Yeah, we love that too. Yeah. So if a student was interested in taking those new classes that mm -hmm. are offered here at Missouri Southern, where would they be able to find you to talk about what the topics are and what, what's all involved in those two classes? Yeah, so come talk to me anytime. Students are welcome in my office. Uh, I'm usually in by 8 a.m. I'm definitely a morning person. <laughs> so pop into my office. I'm in Webster Hall and um, my room's 363, so they can come by anytime. I'd be happy to talk to them. Great, so there you have it, students. If you're interested in those two classes, you know where to go, Webster Hall, third floor. Thank you for joining us today. Natalie, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. We'll see you next time. Another faculty member in the communications department has had the opportunity to travel with students to Paris on a study abroad trip. Chad Jones visits with her about this program. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Chad Jones, and today we're gonna have an exclusive interview with uh, Shanna Slavings. And uh, we understand that uh, you've already been to Paris, right? Correct, yes. I went last March. Last March? Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this interview is basically regarding to the uh, Paris trip for the communication department, correct? Mm -hmm. Is what the Paris trip's for. Um, when is this uh, next uh, Paris trip uh, supposed to be scheduled? 
The coming trip will also be in March of 2016. It is, the seminar starts on March 21st and will last until the 25th, so that's a Monday through Friday. Typically, we like to leave the Friday before the seminar begins um, to kind of heal from a little bit of our jet lag when we get to Paris. I can understand that. Mm -hmm. um, so you say this uh, Paris trip is for the communication department and um, what makes it uh, a student qualified to be able to go on this trip? A student can qualify to go on the trip if they enroll in the course um, COM 460, which is global journalism. So as part of that class, they would be eligible to do the study abroad trip and earn their three credit hours for the class and get their international sash upon graduation for studying abroad. That'd be cool to have. Yeah. Um, and uh, how much would a student be looking to budget to be able to go on this trip? Well, if a student has a specific GPA, then they can apply to qualify for a $1,000 grant provided by the International Studies Department here on campus. Um, in addition to that grant, I would think that a student should budget, right now, I'm going to say about $1,800, probably. It's difficult to have exact numbers until we know the number of students that are going on the trip, who are committed to that trip, and a lot of it also depends on airfare prices. But we like to over budget a little and have money you have extra money while you're there so than like under some spending budget. money. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So that basically includes like the stay mm -hmm. and um, food and whatever else. It that, it includes include? the round trip airfare, getting to and from Paris. It'll include the shuttle from like the airport to the hotel when we get to Paris and vice versa. It includes all of the stay for the hotel, so all of that is included. It does not typically include food. Okay. Um, the seminar provides some of the lunches during the seminar sessions, and there are a lot of dinners that we get invited to into the homes of some of the people while we're there at Paris. Um, but no, that doesn't include a set price of, of food. Okay, cool. And um, so when is this uh, payment supposed to be due by then to be able to go on the trip? We typically ask for a down, like a down payment, like a deposit to know that students are committed to the trip either in late November, early December. Okay. And that's because we need to go ahead and start um, making deposits on the plane tickets and reserving the rooms. And they typically want a down payment for that as well. So as soon as the students start making that deposit, we start making deposits over in Paris. Okay. And um, you said there's some um, seminars you have to attend over there, they're mandatory? The seminars, there's a seminar available every day of the week and some days are more seminar heavy than other days. So there are a couple of days last year when we went where the seminars maybe started at 10 in the morning and we, we probably got out about 3.30 or 4, where another day the seminar might start at 9 and we would be done by 1. So it really just depends on who's available to speak and what time. So it's not set the exact same way every year depending on who the speakers are. But like I said, some days are more seminar heavy than others. Okay. Um, but typically our evenings are, are fairly free. And like I said, a lot of times we get invited to the homes of some of the other speakers. That's, that's really cool. Cool. All mm -hmm. right. Well, to uh, wrap it up uh, here, where would a student be able to find you real quick to um, ask you any further questions if they'd like? Sure. I, my office is in Webster. It's on the third floor, room 359. And my email is slavings, S-L-A-V-I-N-G-S dash S at M-S-S-U dot E-D-U. So you can find me on the third floor of Webster. All right, cool. Well, thank you for your time. And thank you for joining us on today's show. We now turn from academics to athletics. 
In this interview, Aaron Davis introduces us to Missouri Southern's head football coach, Denver Johnson. Thanks for joining us. I'm Aaron Davis, and today we have the privilege of sitting down with Missouri Southern's newest head football coach, Denver Johnson. Coach Johnson, first of all, I want to take, say thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. We know your time is very valuable. Well, that's fine. Glad to be here. Thank you. Great. Well, now, you've pretty much made football your livelihood, uh, playing uh, college in Tulsa, uh, even professionally for a few years before uh, starting your graduate work at Oklahoma State. Uh, the next 30 some odd years, eventually coming back to Tulsa. With that level of experience, you could have pretty much went anywhere. Uh, what attracted you to the head job at Missouri Southern? Well, I think uh, a few things. One, uh, geographic location. Uh, this is a part of the world that we really enjoy living in. I consider Tulsa my hometown and uh, most of my best friends live in or near Tulsa, so I was uh, really wanting to stay close to that. Um, I think Joplin's a good town. I think there's a footprint here to recruit in. I just think there's a lot of factors here that uh, made me believe that this was a good time to be at Missouri Southern. And uh, you know, it looked like something to be fun to do. So here I am. <laughs> Great, well, we're glad to have you here, definitely. Now, you've made some changes in some key coaching positions. Uh, John Johnson as your new running back coach, uh, and Corey Phipps, who have you worked with before uh, as your offensive coordinator. What kind of changes are you hoping they're going to be able to bring to the team? Well, we're going a different direction offensively, uh, obviously. We want to be a little bit more balanced in our run-pass ratio. We want to uh, you know, spread the field and try to be a little more explosive. Uh, offensively, I think that's kind of the style, maybe what's in fashion a little bit today, but it's, it's, there's a practical side of that too. That's, what is, that's what's happening in high school now. Mm -hmm. It's easier to find those guys, and that's what people want to watch. So we're going to try to, we're, we aim to please. Definitely, definitely. Now, you've been through different conferences throughout Division One. This is actually the first time you've coached in a Division Two football. Uh, and in the MIAA, arguably one of the most uh, one of the best conferences in Division II football. What kind of uh, differences are you expecting to find in this division than you have coaching in Division One? Well, actually, my first full-time coaching job was at a Division II school, the University of Tennessee at Martin. It is now a Division I school, but at that time was a Division II school. Mm -hmm. A lot of parallels there. Uh, I think this league, the MIAA, is without question the premier league in Division II football in the country. We have elite Division II programs in this conference and we certainly have templates uh, in this conference of the kind of program that we aspire to build here so again that was one of the things that attracted me here is just the opportunity maybe to uh, you know to try to build that type of program in a league known for that type of program now the experience that you've had uh, in coaching mostly in division one uh, what are you bringing what what is it are you bringing with that here to Missouri Southern? Well, you know, uh, I think a lot's made out of that. Uh, the truth of it is, I think football's the same from junior high to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. It's blocking and tackling and throwing and catching. And, um, you know, the athletes get bigger and stronger and faster at, at different levels sometimes. But really, I think football is pretty much football. Mm -hmm. uh, I met Bill Parcells years and years ago and actually became had a pretty good relationship with him. And he's the first one that made that observation to me. He said, hey, Football is football, and, and, you know, the guys with the biggest linemen and the best-looking tailback usually wins the best, most games. Yeah. Now, you, you actually, your professional experience kind of sets you apart from the other coaches here at Missouri Southern. You're only one of three coaches that have actually played professional football and that actually co that to actually come here and coach. Uh, does playing professionally, do you think, make a difference in a coach? Well, I, I, I'm sure it does. I'm not sure what it is. Uh, I think it's just uh, the passion for the game. I think being an experienced uh, competition at that level, uh, kind of seeing, um, you know, really what the, uh, you know, what the elite athlete, the elite, the elite teams uh, playing on a professional level are, are really all about. I think uh, everything filters down in, in some ways, but. Uh, you know, I think the biggest influence it had on me was some of the coaches that I got to play for and, and develop relationships with that helped me as a as a young fledgling coach mm -hmm. uh, get started. I think it's probably the biggest influence that it had on me. Mm -hmm. and, and just really quickly, what kind of uh, changes are you hoping to see in the near future for Missouri Southern's football program? Well, vast <laughs> and many. Uh, we're trying to change the culture of the program some. We want to get more engaged with the campus, more engaged with the community. 
Uh, we're going to change uh, our recruiting philosophy. Um, we want the local area to be represented. We, we're not going to stop recruiting junior college players, but uh, we certainly want that to come into a better balance. Well, Coach Johnson, thank you again for uh, joining us today and speaking with us. We really appreciate it. And thank you for joining us. We'll have more for you here on KGCS. Another sport with a busy fall schedule is women's soccer. Our next interview features an assistant coach who is sharing information about her role on the team. Hi, thank you for joining me today. My name is Brittany Griffin, and today I'm being joined with the women's assistant soccer coach, Stephanie Curvin. Coach, how are you? Doing well, how are you? I'm fine. I wanted to start off by asking you a few questions just so we all can get to know you since you're new to campus and just a little bit more about the soccer program. My first question is, how did you get into coaching? Uh, well, I first took my first time I took a coaching job was my second semester of senior year. I was an assistant soccer coach at Southern Boone in Ashland, Missouri. And then after I graduated from William Woods University, I accepted a job at Piedmont College um, in Demarest, Georgia. It's a small Division three school. And then in April, I accepted this position. So why did you pick Missouri Southern and coming back to Missouri over staying in Georgia? Uh, two of the biggest things is I'm originally from Missouri, uh, so I get to be closer to my family. Um, I get to see my nieces and nephews and watch them grow up, uh, so that's always nice. And then also, um, but being at a Division III level, uh, there's not scholarships involved, so I really wanted to learn the business side of things. So being here, I get to learn about scholarships and funding and things like that. Okay, and at Missouri Southern, what would you say is your role here as the assistant coach? I have two major roles right now. I'm working with uh, the goalkeepers, so I'm the only goalkeeper coach. And then also, too, I travel around in Missouri and the surrounding states to recruit players as well. I know this Friday you play Missouri Western at Missouri Western. How are you preparing your team for that? Uh, right now we're just trying to get our legs back underneath us. We came off of a pretty long road trip. We were, on, we were away for four days and on the bus for about 18 hours. So we gave the girls two days off, um, and then we had a couple of injuries, so we're trying to rest that up. But tonight, it's our first night back, so we're just going to go at it pretty hard tonight and work on defense and things like that. Being at Missouri Southern, what do you feel like you've learned the most? Uh, to go back to my original um, statement uh, about scholarships and you know the business side of how much to give out and how to budget um, is always huge, especially the different divisions like Division One and Division II. Um, they offer athletic scholarships and in Division Three they don't. Um, also too, when I was at Piedmont, I wasn't like the lone goalkeeper coach or the lone defensive coach. So here I am, the lone goalkeeper coach. So I've learned a lot and you know, I've grown as a coach. So that's always nice. Okay, and my last question for you is going to be as as a coach, what do you look for when you're recruiting a player? Uh, when I first go in recruiting, I, they give you like packets and they give you descriptions of what the player, you know, what they're interested in, like major-wise, their ACT scores and things like that. One of the biggest things I look at is um, academically how strong they are because I think that correlates with how they will be on the field. Also, too, I don't specifically look for like a a forward or a midfielder because we're such a diverse team and we switch up formations so much that if you know we're lacking in our midfield I would like to pull a forward or a midfielder out um, or a defender you know and put them in different in different spots so I just look for someone who's a well-rounded athlete and student. Okay that's good so I just want to say thank you for joining us and good luck on Friday. Thanks. Thank you guys for joining me. Missouri Southern has many faculty members who have worked on campus for a long time. Our next segment features someone who has seen the campus grow since it was established at its present location. Good morning and welcome to the show. My name is Katherine Seaford and I'm joined by Dr. Conrad Gabera. We all know what it's like to be a student, but Dr. Gabera is going to share with us what it's like to teach students here at Missouri Southern. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being here, Dr. Rivera. <laughs> Thank you for asking me, Catherine. <laughs> Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about yourself? Oh, wow. Well, this is my 49th year at Missouri Southern. And uh, just for the cameraman, this is what Missouri Southern looked like when I arrived in 1967. Four buildings and uh, certainly uh, nothing as far as any sort of campus almost, sidewalks notwithstanding. Uh, it was, you know, a real challenge. 
So from that time, 1967 onward, you know, I've been teaching classes in sociology, anthropology, and now in international studies, uh, averaging probably about between 250 to 300 students a year, teaching probably four, sometimes five different classes if I had an overload. Mm -hmm. That's a, a lot of changes. Oh, it's a lot of changes on the ground and certainly in the faculty. When we started, we had, I think, 70 faculty members in 1967, somewhere around 1,900 students. Now we have upwards of 300 faculty members, and I think the latest count is nearly 5,900 students, 5,870 or something. Wow. That's a big change. Hey, that's a lot of change. <laughs> what ways do you think that the students have changed? Oh, no comparison. Uh, first of all, the students that came here, I think, were less prepared in 1967, but they were hard workers. They would never ask for a student study guide. They never, you know, grouched about assignments. And you'd ask them to write a 20-page paper. They'd somehow get it done the hard way. Today, your cohorts know so much more than they did at that time. We have to change our teaching styles. I don't even ask students to do term papers anymore because they're too accessible from other resources. You're just much more knowledgeable. I think you're better writers. I think, for instance, you reflect, for instance, the change in the culture mm -hmm. over that particular time, particularly as far as communication and information is concerned. What are some of the most rewarding experiences you've had? Ah, rewarding experiences. Well, being here with you. Well, besides that. Okay. Well, uh, I think uh, seeing certain students graduate, having students come back across the years. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I've often wondered what it would be like to admit, be an administrator, but knowing full well that I couldn't be, you know, with my attitude toward time and other things. But, you know, I don't know very many administrators have students who come back and ask to see them. Over the years, I've had a lot of students come back, and I've been able to keep contact with them, see how they're doing in their careers. I'm really proud of the ones that have gone on. We've had about a half a dozen came PhDs in sociology, and certainly, uh, you know, it's just nice to have this kind of contact, and I think that's the real reward. Plus the fact they'll always come back and say, Doc, we learned quite a bit in your class. And if that's the case, I really feel doubly rewarded. You're a pretty good teacher then, huh? Well, if you say so. I think you're excellent. That's oh, why I asked you, you here. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get a grade. <laughs> if you could give incoming students one piece of advice, what would it be? Do the very best you can your first semester. Don't get bad grades the first semester. If you get A's and B's your first semester, then you'll be hungry to continue that the rest of your college career. You'll have an appreciation for study. You'll have a sense of accomplishment. But my gosh, if you have a negative or a low grade point average and you've failed a couple classes your first semester or something, you're behind the eight ball. And you're always looking up. And it's a long way up. If you start positive, you'll end positive. So start strong and stay strong. That's it. Yeah. Well, I know that there's plenty of students who would love to talk to you. Where can they find you? Uh, that's a good question, because I practice the sociology of disappearance an awfully lot now that I've gotten older. But my office is at 228 in uh, Webster Hall, our building annex here. I have office hours posted. Of course, you know, I have the email, which I've gotten around to answering now. Mm -hmm. And I'm here quite a bit of the time. Otherwise, I don't know where you would find me. What is your email? My email. Boy, that's good. Oh, gubera-c at mssu.edu. Pretty right. simple, isn't it? It is. Okay. Well, thank you very much for your time. I really Catherine, appreciate it. It was really a pleasure. It's nice talking with you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for watching, and have a great day. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Campus Talk. I'm Alicia Henson, and join us again for another program as we take a look at life at Missouri Southern.